What is going on, everybody? In a brand new world of modern, I am so excited here. My name is Dylan Hubby. Come to my stream, and today we are going to play some Death Shadow with some new toys here. I am. So, I can't even describe how excited I am for this. Like it's been years since the old elf has came off the. Uh, I gotta put Lilian in here. It's been years since the old elf came off the ban list, or what has been legal and modern. So I am so excited to give this a whirl here. I've definitely done a couple change-ups with the deck here. Um, I added a land. Uh, I added a basic to what I was doing and switched the fetch lands around because I think that there's going to be an uptick in Jace decks and, you know, things like there are going to be more Path to Exiles running around. So I think that I want one more basic here. I cut the blue from this deck to give that a whirl because with Bloodbraid Elf cascading into counter spells isn't where we want to be. We already have, like some semi uh, issues like we, we don't cascade like Jun does but Blood Bright Elf is going to give this deck the ability to hang in the late game to stay longer to have the staying power that it didn't have it actually can fix an issue plus I mean let's be real if we're playing against Jund here I'm going to be cascading into Lingering Souls which is just the absolute stones so that's the first deck we're going to run through today and then the main event right here is what I'm excited about. So let's just get into the match. And let's play some magic. I cannot believe that they did this, by the way. Like, I, I totally could see Blood Bright Elf coming off the coming off the uh, the ban list. Like that makes sense to me. But Man, I cannot believe they put they unleashed Jace the Mind Sculptor in Modern. Like that is on that is just absolutely unreal. Let me go grab my slippers. And we're already in. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited right now. I can't even describe it. All right. One that I would like to play first. This hand's okay. We're going to keep it. But we have two redraws here. Looks like we're going to be able to get to Blood Bright Elf if we want it. Depending on what is going on here. So let's start here. Tarmac Life is good. The Tarmac Life is okay. So we'll go like this and pass. Probably fetch a tap land the end of my opponent's turn. Bird, okay. So we're going to get Goyf down for sure. This is going to be an overgrown tomb. This is probably a Jace deck. Probably like a ramp, or maybe ramp into Blood Red Alpha Zoo deck, maybe. Oh, we got Tarmogoyf for days. So we'll see what's going on. Probably going to edict this bird next turn, unless this is a blood moon, which is like... All right. Yay, magic. I guess I could have seen that coming, which is a little frustrating. But, I mean, at least we're starting the stream off in a modern, you know, note here. Oh, that is just so great. Yeah, I didn't even like... I was so excited there, Ashkin. I didn't even think about it. I could have totally played around it, too, because we have two basics now. And it's like, I don't even want to play. I just want to go play a real game of Magic. So we're going to get out of this. So we're playing against a Ponza deck, which is good to know. BBE is. We got a couple of them here. I don't think it's necessarily great here, though. So we're going to go get this in here, get this. Probably want all of our cards that can interact with a couple of their early of their early, uh, with their little guys. Probably want the Dreadboard, too, because they play, like, Primeval... They could play Infernal Titan. And it's cards like Stormbreath Dragon. So let's see what I want to bring out. I don't think we're going to need these Battle Rages to win. 
The elves probably aren't really where we want to be in this matchup, which means we probably can board out a land, especially if we're not bringing in a the white cards. Um, so we have these five. The brutalities are probably a little over the top. Yes, I am excited for the elf as well. I want to figure out like where where the elf goes. You know. Do I want battle? Like, I don't necessarily think I really need battle rages. I want like enough things to snap off the one drops, and then not lose to like. Uh, maybe we'll keep one battle rage in. Let's see what this looks like. First match in, we have to board out Bloodbraid Elf. So sad. I think this is good. I think this is what we want to do. Like, we might want more Battle Rages, but I don't know what I'm bringing them in for. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Like, maybe we don't need all of these Lilianas. This Pulse is probably, like, kind of mediocre. I mean, it hits Blood Moon, but we can kind of play around Blood Moon. Yeah, let's try, let's try cutting one of these and keeping a Battle Rage in. Let's try this. I'm thinking about moving to straight John Minrange. Sucks, but I need comments again. I need to some yeah, I mean, like, the problem... So, like, all right, this hand is good. So I'm going to cycle before fetching, I think. Because I wouldn't... Nah, no, I'm going to fetch first. This probably gets me Blood Crypt, as I have Blood Crypt in my list. Um, <clears throat> The pro... So, like... I'm excited. I think Jund is going to be a great deck, too. Okay? Like, I am really scared. All right. We, sh we should be doing good this game. I am really scared about Jace the Mind Sculptor. Like, all right, Corsair, Chameleon, Colossus. This has to go. That just kills us. I am really so scared about Jace the Mind Sculptor when it comes to playing these Jund decks because you're trying to compete with Jace on a value base or on a value base level which just like isn't going to happen you're not going to be able to keep up so i'm a bit nervous about that we're just going to play this get tom worth into play hopefully we get a fetch land next turn so we can play goif and death shadow or like lightning bolt and death shadow or like lightning bolt and tom goif or just so that we can double spell if they're not playing if they're lacking this bad we should be in good shape yeah that was really good okay um so we get in then we bolt our opponent next turn, or we can also just bolt ourselves. But it's the same thing, I guess. So we'll get in here. It'll actually it'll grow Tarmogoyf also next turn, which is great. Like I'm afraid that if if any if any deck, I probably want I need a second black source. If any deck tries to interact with Jace on Jace's terms, they're going to lose. Like there's no deck that accrues an incremental advantage like Jace does. Jace just... Jace is on its own level. It's on its own world. Alright, there's the Heath. So probably he plays Kitchen Things. He might play Corsair, but that seems kind of bold. Play Kitchen Things, okay. So I know two out of the five. Blitz gets us Delirium as well. So now we just attack. We bolt ourselves. If he blocks the Death Shadow, then we just traverse for another Death Shadow. Go here. This gives us Delirium also, which is sweet. Pumps our Tarmogoyfs. I wrote about, let me pull this up here, get this going here. I wrote about right here, and this kind of has some of my thoughts about what is going to go on in this new world, this new modern that we're in. And I'm like, I have some real, I have some, I think that this is going to be the best Blood Red Elf show. Like, I think that this, this whole deck here is just so much better than anything that Jund is doing. That oh, they missequenced a little bit there, but we lost a little, lost out on a life. Okay, so they block both of these, take eight. 
Okay, so they have an R relic. They have a relic on top, which is kind of annoying. Boom, boom, block, take a lot. All right. Go here. Go there. And we just turn five. Like, that is what this deck has going for it. While being able to play that Bloodbright Elf game, hopefully. I don't know if we can play that Bloodbright Elf game because, like, if I'm going to play Blood Red Elf, you look at this deck, there's no there's no counter spells. If the format devolves to aggro decks that don't care about Jace, combo decks that don't care about Jace, and Jace decks, then I'm going to want counter spells, which means you can't play the Elf. Okay. So, on the draw, what do I want here? I probably don't want these Lilianas on the draw. So let's see if I can find... I'm gonna see if I, I'm gonna think I'm gonna board these for the veils. I don't want veil while we're you know scrambling for defense. Yeah, I think this is what we're gonna do. We we could even cut a land here, and maybe like nah, I'm not gonna cut a land. We can just discard them. Do we have three brutalities? But I think I think that this will ultimately become the best shell for Bloodbraid Elf. This hand's pretty good. We give we have a couple ways to strip a blood moon. We unfortunately need to fetch a non-basic on our turn. We don't have a way to kill the relic. That's better than seeing a mana accelerant. We probably could have boarded out a traverse, honestly. That was like the best draw possible. So if we hit like a if we hit another fetch land off the top, like our opponent is in quite a bit of trouble. So let's bobble them. Alright, sure, you get my fetch land. I should have done that in reverse order, just because it's more valuable to get that in. They have it. There's their elf. All right, there it is. So we just want to hit a land. All right. So they have roast. They have another elf as well. So I'm just gonna take this roast. I think we're just gonna try to get out ahead of these elves. Just kill our opponents before they come down. They even need to hit a land to do that. But they they can cycle. I guess the bolt's not bad. There's the Heath. So I would assume that they're going to have to cycle. Okay, let's get rid of this. Fetch land. Yeah! Okay, so... Now we go get Blood Crypt. It's been a while since I've registered a Lightning Bolt, let me tell you what. Like... Then we play Double Shadow. Then next turn... We're actually just going to kill them on four because we're going to thought seize and attack and well we don't have a second right if we get a second red source we can just kill them on four okay so let's I wish I had a I wish I had a whatever it is a uh Bobble to see what they're doing. I'm going to assume that they get to Bloodbright Elf next turn. So we're going to go like this. I think we're going to take an Elf. And now we'll attack and then bolt this. Because this is six. I could just attack. Because is there any way that they kill me next turn? Three. So if I bolt myself, if I bolt myself, I go to seven. This puts me to four off the attack. If they hit a lightning bolt, it puts me to one, and then we battle rage over the top. Yeah, I think we're just going to, like, bolt ourselves. Like, even if they cast, like, this is this is just a kill next turn. And they get two cracks at a land, it's gonna kinda of feel bad if they if they hit it. This is gonna be super bad if they like get an engineered explosives, but So now like elf into bolt doesn't kill me. I'd have to be elf into a four mana four mana like I don't know, it'd have to be elf into four mana damage spell to my face, which I, I don't know of a four mana damage spell in modern that would make sense to be played here. Yeah, 
There it is. Corsair. Yes, yeah, so they still just die. Like they have to. They have to like. They have to block both. This. Yeah, they're still just dead. But. Just, like, turn for them, man. Don't mess with me. Okay, so six. Doesn't matter. Like, nice elf, man. All right. One and oh. No, one and oh, zero cascades. Kind of sad. No cascades yet. Sorry about this. Sorry, I got something that just came up here. There was a typo in my in my article here. I just need to add it here. Okay, back. We're back. Okay, so yeah, we have a death shadow hand. Like, let's. And this is right here. We're gonna have turn one, not turn one, but we have, we have delirium. So, you know, if we want to get into the late game, maybe maybe we get something going on there. We get something like, like maybe this is the game we find a Bloodbraid Elf. You never know. So it's going to get Overgrown too. I'm going to bobble my opponent and then Inquisition them. Worm Coil Engine. Looks like we got a Debbie Downer Tron guy. Okay, Urz is mine, Urz is mine, Blooming Marsh. Yeah, I think I'm just going to take Fatal Push here and try to beat my opponent like into submission. Hope they don't draw... I guess they have the, they have the, they have the Blooming Marsh, so they have the Black Source, so... Urz is mine, Urz is map. We only do this because he's got two Ur like he needs to draw two Tron pieces. Okay. Blood Crypt. Get Tarmogoyf into play. Next time we can traverse for a land and then traverse for a Death Shadow. Like we can go get some. Oh man, he drew the tower. Are you kidding me? Dude, I love Tron. I love Tron so much. Okay, that's pretty good. So I actually think we might be able to just get over the top of this. So. This goes, then we bolt ourselves. So I'm going to start by attacking. And then I think I just traverse for a death shadow, traverse for a death shadow. Or maybe, maybe I edict. Maybe I play Liliana now. Yeah. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna traverse for two Death Shadows. Play a Death Shadow. Oh, this is a little. This is kind of difficult. So, hey, Squad Chief, how you doing? I've seen your streams have been coming off the, getting some serious views lately, man. That's awesome. 
stomping ground. So he's going to be able to worm coil engine me next turn, which is just fantastic. I love it when the Tron players just rip it. Like, just absolute... They do it every time, though. Just, like, absolute savages. So... Stomping ground. I don't know what to do. I could just play Liliana now and sit. Because I think I'm going to need all these cards. And then go, like... Bolt Edict, Bolt the Death Toucher, attack with my Tarmogoyf, and then Traverse for a Shadow and play it. Yeah, I think we're just gonna I actually think we're just gonna play this Liliana and sit. And sit on it. If I knew we were drawing a land, then I would play both Death Shadows. Do they? That's just so infuriating. All right, let's get this stomping ground. Just play Liliana and sit on it, I think. And then I'll edict them next turn. Bolt the death touch token, attack, and then traverse for a death shadow and play it. Yeah, there's the power plant. Which is hope for the love of Christ that they just miss. We have Battle Rage, like to win this game, I think. Yeah, see, we hit a land that's just. I mean, it's not terrible because it lets us do everything. So let's go like this. Bolt the Death Toucher with this one. Right? Because then we go traverse, traverse, okay. You excited to uh, you excited to stream your blue decks, my friend? Like, are you gonna you're gonna get in there with some uh, with some with uh, with like some young pyro action? Not young pyro, Jace the mind sculptor. I'm losing my mind. Okay, um, now do we just traverse or tarmogoyf? Play tarmogoyf. What do we traverse now? Nah, because we can tra we can make Death Shadow larger next turn. Though Tarmogoyf is lethal, whatever. We're just gonna get Death Shadow because like I, we have so many more draws that make Death Shadow great. I could get an Elf. Oh shit, dude. We're told this isn't right, but I'm a hundred percent doing it. We're gonna go get this Death Shadow. We're gonna traverse again. We're just gonna we're gonna fucking Cascade next turn. I don't even I don't even care. We're over here with like one, three, five, seven, nine, man. Okay, there's that. Don't do this to me. An oblivion stone, no. Map. God, does he always have it? Or at least this elf is gonna like let us recover. At least he's got nothing left. Alright, I'm gonna attack first. I could, like, tick my Liliana up, play my Blood Elf, try to abrupt decay this, and then, like, see what happens. But... Box. All right. I mean, at least like we're gonna be starting over next turn. And if our opponent misses, like we've got an elf, and we'll see what our elf does here. So he's got two. We know his last two cards are lands. So he's got to crack this, right? No. I mean, oh yeah, he can do it with. No, he can't. All right. He's got a Sanctum of Ugin, but we know everything he's got. That seems kind of greedy. All right, let's get in here. I would assume... Yeah, I mean, they obviously they gotta blow this up.
All right. Well, I should have ticked up before combat. I forgot that it was going to hit my Liliana, but whatever. Whatever. I'm just, I was so excited to like do this. Let's see what happens. Okay, we hit a traverse, which like, you know, isn't super great, but it allows us to go get an, probably getting another elf and then, yeah, because another elf is lethal next turn. No, it's not. Never mind. Losing my mind. We played this before combat. Plays after combat, I mean. Which is like not usually what you do with Blood Great Elf, but. Oh, God, he hit a, tr he hit a Karn. No, you hit an Ugin. Okay. Gross. These fucking Tron people. So it's not up to note there. We didn't like Blood Bright Elf into something that like could have impact the board. He's just going to Ulamog me next turn. Which is pretty bad. So he just shoots that. Okay. Well, what do we have to hit now that's like really impactful? So it's three cards. We could hit a Thought Seize, which is really good. That lets us Edict next turn. All right. Well, we have another green source. So we'll go get that. We can hit like a Thought Seize here, which would be pretty good. So let's just spin it. All right. Yeah, I mean, we're going to cast it. Question is, I probably, no, nah, because he's just going to, like, tick down. He's going to tick down for four. And then Ulamog two of my land. So I have to hit a land next turn to deal with this. So maybe I just attack this thing. What is this? XLS. Am I winning the game if I attack this? Probably not, but I've got one more lightning bolt in my deck and no more Bloodbraid Elves. So I don't have any more reach. So I can deal with this if I draw a land, but then this is still in play. I think we're dead either way at this point. It's freaking Tron, people, man. All right, I guess I'm just going to be an adult and attack this. But we, we spent, you know, four mana, seven power. I don't know if it was right to attack that or not, but, like, that's what that is what we did. This play seems... I mean, I'm like, I'm not going to be able to kill this, which is my problem. Like, I can deal with this thing. Need that last turn. Like, we're putting up the good fight, but we're not we're not in any good shape here. This is where we want the counter spells. Like... Yeah, we're, we're good here. All right, this is where we want the counter spells. Like I was talking about that if... If it become if the metagame moves to like a Tron game to answer these Jaces and these Blood Red Elves, then playing a counter spell version of the deck is better. I want these. Want the Battle Rage. Want probably want this Grudge. It's not great, but we'll be able to do something. We're gonna get rid of our fatal pushes. Um Do we want these elves? That's the problem. The elf was okay there, but I don't know if we want, you know. Like, the elf is something you can come down and deal with, like, Karn. My, my, I, my, my first, whatever it is, my first, uh, instinct says that we don't want this card. And this card's not good in this matchup. So I think I'm gonna cut it. I think it's just better to play, like, a lower to the ground Death Shadow game. That being said, we could leave one in. And we could cut, like, our Godless Shrine. Because we're going lower on Red Red Elves. And we can just have one there for like that. Okay, well, the game stalled out. We can traverse for it. Maybe it's better than a decay. I guess decay is okay on the is decent on the map on the play because we can hit a map. So let's try this. Thirty one viewers. I hope everyone's having a good day. I hope everyone's having a good time hanging out here. I appreciate you all showing up to the stream here, playing in a whole new world. All right. I mean, that's the turn two Death Shadow, which. We do need we need we need to draw action, but at least they're mulliganing, so hopefully we can play like a very fast game. They put a card on top. So let's go get overgrown tomb. Take a look. We have the lands, like we we will be getting the elf on over Urza's mine, Urza's power pant. 
So he either kept a land that produces green and black mana, or he kept a map on top. So should I just take this fatal push and look to get there with this death shadow? Probably. Because he, maybe he kept like a, he could have kept a, 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 a sphere, but I'm not sure. But I think we're just going to get rid of this fatal push. We're going to try to like get in there. Maybe I'll find another discard spell here. Get the map. Okay. There's the mine. All right. We don't need, we don't need any more of those. We only have 18. We sided one out. This overgrown tomb. Best draw would probably be like a street race. Chromatic sphere. Okay. That's kind of bold. Because, like, what if you hit a payoff spell and not a land? They must have hit a land. Maybe they hit the natural one there. All right, well, we get to take a look. I mean, at least we're getting in there. Yeah, they did. So let's get rid of this Ugin. Oh, shoot. I have all my fetch lands in my hand. Missed out on a point of damage there, which is, which sucks. We would have, but like, well, we're going to be able to, that sucks. So we missed out on a point. I forgot that these two were in my hand. I'm just so excited that I'm not like, I'm not thinking. I'm just like, it's been so long since I've played the Bloodbraid Elves. There's the star. So they're gonna start like just chaining off, and we're just gonna have to hope that they don't find, you know, something to interact with us. <clears throat> okay, so they just got the star. They played the map. So they have four cards. They have an Urza's Tower. Let me know what they played. All right, that's a good draw. That's not bad. Unfortunately, it means that we're not going to get Delirium. It doesn't give us Delirium, which kind of sucks. We just got to hope. Don't. Freaking Chromatic Star, okay. Come on, don't try on me, bro. Don't Fatal Push my guy. Another tower. Karn. Okay, we can answer a Karn. Alright, well, so what are we doing? I guess I'm casting this. I mean, I don't... There's not really much else I'm doing with it. Okay, so they just have forests. And play this tap just so we don't have to take damage to leave us open to an like a uh, Ugin. Come on, dude, just miss. You hit an ancient strength. Oh my god, that's gross. I hit a Karn, Jesus. The Tron. Um, I will at some point do that, but come on, now we need. All right, well, that's like our best hit there. Show me a lightning bolt. Oh, yes! Oh, that doesn't kill him. I thought I was the one. Damn it. Um, no, we're just gonna... We're gonna do that to him. Oh, I looked at our... I got our life totals mixed up. I'm all over... The, I'm so excited to be, like, playing magic at this point that I'm just all over the place. Like, I'm just so pumped that there's Bloodbraid Elf is back in the format that it's just, it's so awesome. What do I have left in my deck? I've got one more Lightning Bolt that deals with that, just outright. Okay, they're helping. All right, I mean, that's, that's something, but it's not, it's not great. We have Maelstrom Pulse. Oh, man. This is so, it's so much fun to play with Bloodbraid Elf. Like, I'm sitting here and you're just like, hearts pounding. Oh, they hit, god, they just always have it. No. This is an Ugin. 
It's in Ulamog. It's in Ulamog. All right. We're, we're good. We're good. There's no need to play this game anymore. Oh, that's so, like... God, we're having so much fun over here. We're doing our new things. And then he just, like... Trons. He just trons us, which is just, like, so sad. Oh, I need to calm down and, like, get back into it. Like, I'm just excited. Um, what am I going to do? Am I going to play some BBE Jund? Probably. Yeah, I'll stream some Jund here in a little bit. Not today, probably. I'm going to stream this, and then I've got one more deck that I'm going to try out here later. Um, going to try out one more. I got another main event here with another Death Shadow deck, but it has the other band card in it, which I'm excited about. But no matter what I do, Tron is the bane of my existence. Maybe I don't want three brutalities. Maybe we want like another pulse or another dread board. The old 71 card special. All right, this hand's great. We'll bobble ourselves. Then we'll bobble our opponent. We'll figure out if we want to fetch or not. Leyline of Sanctity. All right. Times are a changing. So this means we're probably playing against like a bottle deck. So let's take a look here. Fatal push. I honestly might just thought seize myself. Let's look at our top card. I can always just thought seize myself next turn if I need to to get this Death Shadow into play. Okay, so that means so Liliana is not going to do anything, and that Wooded Foothills means I can play a Shadow. So I'm actually just going to thought seize myself. Get this Liliana in the graveyard so that I have Delirium, and if I rip a Death Shadow off my other two draws, I can just go double Shadow. It just clears my mana up for next turn. I think we're playing against like a Bogle deck. Okay, so we had two lands, which is a little sad. God, we have such new toys, and then people just come in and they try to play like this. It's a pretty good draw. I think I'm going to play that now. We have new toys in the format, and then these people, they just come in here with their new stuff. Um, do I actually want to... I probably actually want to play Death Shadow, because if he attacks me, it's going to make it, it's got a larger clock for next turn. We have so many new cool toys, and then people just play these decks... That are just like not fun. They're the fun police. It's a brand new format. We need to have fun. I could also be like wired up on coffee. I'm so excited. Okay, Rancor. Come at me, dude. I mean, I'm going to, like, race this if he attacks. Yeah. So we'll take this six. If we draw a team or battle rage, he's dead. We didn't. Okay. Um, seven. Block. So I don't want to take any damage, actually. I just want to do this. The next turn, I'm going to block here. Soak up. And it should be enough to get there. I'm gonna play this out so that if, if I need to next turn, I can hold. I cannot do anything with this, and I can shock myself and threaten to uh, fetch, and then threat. I can shock my. Excuse me. I can shock myself next turn and fetch shock to put me to one <clears throat> if my opponent doesn't attack. But with this having trample, I do need to worry a little bit. We are gonna block it, so. We need a Battle Rage off the top. Spirit Mantle. Oh, the sadness. Where are all these Jace and Bloodbright Elf decks? The fun magic. Alright, um... So I would definitely want this Battle Rage. Um, I want this Pulse. I wonder if I want Elf, because I have so many, like, poor cards. Like, these are poor, 
And probably these bolts are poor. Like, they hit Dryad Arbor and Core Firewalker. All hair on and simply barn. Yeah, for sure. I probably want to go like this, maybe. Like, there's not a lot that's super great in this matchup because, like, main board ley line of sanctity is 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 tough for the home team. But we have the, we're gonna bring in the third battle rage, which is it's just gonna be pretty good. Like Bloodbraid Elf at least attacks. Might do it could cascade into something that does something. Like we have so many do nothing cards. It's probably worth giving it a try. Yeah, we're gonna go like this. So we beat uh, we beat Panza. I don't think Radiant Flames is great. A lot of bass. It's, I mean, like if we if we think that Bloodbraid Elf is gonna be better just because it can attack and impact the board, then cascading into that's not good. So this hand is absolutely insane if he has, if he doesn't have a ley line, and we just straight up lose if he has a ley line. We have Battle Rage, which is like our best card. So if we draw a Death Shadow, we can win this game. I think I'm gonna keep it, and we're just gonna like cross our fingers right here. And if not, we're gonna move on to the next game. I'm totally cool losing this way. Didn't have it. Okay. So this goes and gets us Blood Crypt. Start off with an Inquisition. Then just hope that he doesn't have two creatures. He has two creatures. So if he has two creatures, I can actually just take one of them. Then next turn, double discard spell both the Daybreak Coronets. So I think we'll do that. We could take, like, the Umbra to be cute, but he's going to draw more redundant ways to get stuff on this Bogle. Okay. So let's take the first Daybreak Coronet. All right, that Spirit Mantle is going to be annoying. So I'm going to take the Spirit Mantle... Now I wish this was another black source. Just the the that's the problem with having the having the forest in the deck. It's just not a black source. Um God, that spirit mantle is gonna be like super annoying, but if either of these daybreak coronets get in. I think I can race the spirit mantle. I don't think I can race the daybreak coronets. So our best draw next turn is another black source. Because if I can do Thought Seize, the Daybreak Coronet, into, um... Oh, I didn't play my... Oh my god, I literally just clicked through my turn, I didn't even realize it. Uh... <laughs> oh man, I'm just so excited for like all that is going on right now that I'm just like all over the place. Really, yeah, this is gonna this is gonna be a rough one. I mean, my my point still lies here. If I draw a black source, like we're still in good shape. That's like a redraw. All right, that's still not bad. So we go like here. I mean, we're, we still definitely could win this game, which is kind of crazy. So we take this daybreak coronet, get this traverse for our swamp. And then next turn we play Death Shadow. The Spirit Mantle is going to make it so it's a three-turn clock, so we're probably not going to want to take any more damage until we kill them, which we we could do depending on what our draw is. They drew a Plains. This is going to find a Dryad Arbor. So this is just three. I mean, if he goes attack, attack, he dies. Even through Dryad Arbor. So we're going to leave this in our hand in case we want to shock ourselves next turn. He can block. He can sit back and block if he wants. But like we can put ourselves to one next turn. Which means we put 24. Okay, that's fine. Attack. Just attack with your dude. Attack with your dude. 
He doesn't attack with this guy. Okay. So we're going to play another Death Shadow. Let me think. So I can play another Death Shadow. Next turn, he attacks me. As long as he doesn't draw a plus three, plus three. Like, Ethereal Armor kills me. Um, Daybreak Coronet kills me. But that's, like, kind of it. So I just play this Death Shadow and pass. Next turn, if he doesn't attack, I just go to Shock. Thought sees him. Go to two. Battle Rage, whatever he doesn't block. We were pun we were punished for zoning out. Now we were we were too excited. I mean, if he doesn't find a plus six plus six or plus three plus three, we should be good. If he does, though, we in some trouble. That doesn't do it. Had he fetched and had a dryad armor, it would have done it. Come at me, bro. He's probably not going to... If he didn't attack last turn, he's not going to attack this turn. Okay, so like I said, now we just do the play. We battle rage whichever one he doesn't block. Or he blocks with just this. Do we have another fetch land that that gets? We have overgrown tomb thoughtsies. We go to 20... We go to 1. 12. Puts 2 power in front of one of these. Or does it even matter? So if we go to 11, 22, puts two power in front. It doesn't matter what we do. Here, we, we've we got him. As long as we don't tap this red source. So I guess we're just going to go with the safe one here. He has no cards. Battle Rage that one. And get out of dodge. Alright. Well, now we're going going into game three. My heart's just a pumping. So now here's the argument like that someone was bringing up in the chat. Do we bring back in do we cut these on the draw because they're a little too slow and maybe try these? We got lucky for sure. Like maybe we just go like this and try to be hyper aggressive and cut the elves on the draw. And we can also cut like maybe we can also cut our forest because we don't need the basic and bring in like one of these to play around course Firewalker and whatever that dumb card is, the Dryad Arbor. I kind of dig that on the draw. Be a little more reactive, because there's definitely a chance that he keeps a hand that is like Leyline, Leyline, dude, dude, dude lands. You know, or Leyline, not the, get these guys not big enough, but he's got a Leyline. Like, you probably have to keep that. Yeah, I think we're going to try this. We're going to try the Radiant Flames on the draw. Radiant Flames is like a Nambo with Bloodbraid Elf right here, like Wicked, but I don't think there's a matchup where you want Radiant Flames and Bloodbraid Elf in your deck at the same time, and I want that Radiant Flames, I want that three damage to deal three damage to these human decks. So, I think Radiant Flames is really, is really good in this deck right now. I think it's probably the best sweeper in Modern. If Dredge or Voice of Resurgence decks come up, you want Anger. You say that, Albo Flitz, but I also, I mean, I hit, like, a Death Shadow in the first match, and for four mana, I put, like, 12 power on the board, you know? Like, it's not, like, it's certainly, like, the Bloodbraid Elves in this deck are not like the Bloodbraid Elves in Jund. Oh, is Battle Rage a bad hit if you have a creature in play, you know? Like, like, uh, what was it, how am I going to say this? How am I going to put this? Um... 
the blood red elves are going to be better in a gen deck, and I like I totally understand that. Wow, we have a, they mulligan to three. Jesus. All right, so let's bobble ourselves. The blood red elves are going to be better in a gen deck. Not like for sure. Uh, we're gonna keep that because if like something weird goes on, that's gonna be like really good for the home team. So that means this has to go get black. Actually, we don't even need to fetch with this at the moment. But we don't want to. We probably don't need another land. So let's go get Blood Crypt. Yeah, I mean, like, as long as you put Blood Bright Elf on the stack, like, you're you're doing good. Like that card is very powerful. All right. Now we're now we're in good shape. I don't know what they did with this scry. I'm just so not paying attention to anything that's going on right now because. I'm so excited to play, and I'm excited to talk about this, like... Alright, Core Spirit Walk. Core Spirit Dancer. Alright, so glad we kept those Radiant Flames. Now we probably just play Tarmogoyf. There's no need traversing for Death Shadow. Well, we might traverse for Death Shadow now. Let's go like this. Um... He's got a Razor Verge Ticket as the last card. I might just... Okay, so it's plus. Whenever you cast an aura spell, you may draw a card. I think I'm just gonna pump the brakes, and if they go to put an aura on this, I'm gonna fatal push it. So here's what we're gonna do: we're gonna traverse for a death shadow, and then just hold, and deal with this, and then set radiant flames up for next turn. And another thing that's like, another thing that people aren't thinking about when it comes to blood braid elf is that, like, I wrote about this in my uh, in my article for Top Deck, is that Death Shadow is the... How do I say this? Um, Death Shadow is a much more powerful shell than Jund. Right, what do we got? Play a creature. Oh, my God. Death Shadow is, like, a, a just incredibly... Is, is Like, the, the supporting cast of Death Shadow is much better than the supporting cast of Jund. But, let's see what they're drawing, just so that we know. We know what to be in for. Okay, so they get, they get a redraw, which, you know, is good for them, but we're going to get the good old three for one in here. There are definitely ways that we lose from here. So that's, what do you do? Red, black, white. Um... There's definitely. How do I how do I how do I put this? The Bloodbright Elves are more power are more powerful from Jun because Jun has a higher average, um, average power level of spell in their deck. Wow! So we even have their next thing covered, which is just fixes our problem. Um, Jun has an, an average a higher power level of spell. But once you get down here and you play 18 lands, one mana 8-8s, eight eight, you have a better average draw. Like, my supporting cast is much better than the Jund supporting cast. Bloodbraid Elf is huge for Jund. Bloodbraid Elf gives Jund a whole, new power, a whole new level, but I think that their deck is so far beyond the times that I think that this is going to be the best shell. This is going to be where we want to be here. Now, Blood Red Elf might not even be good in this deck. We're going to have to find out. Like, if the floor... Like, I, I have... I have two true misses in this deck, let's say. If I don't have anything on the board, these battle rages are bad to hit. But, besides... Um, besides that... You got it backwards. The core of Death Shadow is stronger than the core of Jund. I agree. But Jund has a better supporting cast. I, I mean, the Jace deck is next. What do you mean bad? That's a four man a lot. Wait, I'm <laughs> Now, you want to see the old, you want a little sneak peek there, Michael the Flame? Because that's next. Right here. Right here, we just gotta be quick. 
Oh, Moto's deciding to die. Moto's like, we can't show Mike LaFlame what we're doing. It's right there. This is what I'm... This right here is what I think could be busted. I don't know how to build it, or I don't know anything really about it, but I think that a Jace... I think that a Death Shadow with Jace in it can be really busted. It's like... Like, it's an offensive Jace. It's a Jace that is going to, like, get after... Like, it's a Jace that not only can pull you from behind, affect the board, but it can cause turn four kills. And this is huge. Yeah. Well, we can't hit street race. When you hit a bobble, like, it's not great. So do we want to, like, not get got by this Ponza dude here? He, he messed up there. Yeah, he just said the wrong thing. Um, I think we're just going to, like, be adults and not get... Oh, the Blood Moon's on top. That's gross. So now we just have to go get our forest. We have to, like, adult it up here. I could, I could wait to do this, but... I should have waited because I could hit Fatal Push or Lightning Bolt. Oh, I'm going to be so mad if I had a Fatal Push or a Lightning Bolt. All right. <clears throat> Wouldn't Jace be better in Grixis Shadow just because you have an easier ability to cast it and with other... cast it and other spells in your deck? I think that Blood Braid Elf is good... or that Jace... It's probably good in anything that can cast it, right? Like... If you actually have the means... Alright, what do I want to do? I think I want to just check... I want to check for a Bloodbraid Elf. Because I really don't want to get Elves next turn. Or Stone Rained. Alright, we're going to get Elf next turn. Um, what am I What am I trying to say here? Um, wouldn't Jace be better in a Grixis deck? Because it's ability to play cast there with your other spells in your deck. I mean, like... If you can think about it as Jace as being Molten Rain... Oh, Molten Rain just wrecks me. Oh, wow. At least he didn't take my... Oh, man. Now I'm, like, punished for not doing this. Oh. See, like, are we going to say that the hits in this deck, in a Birds of Paradise deck... It's just that Jace is such a high power level card. That's That's the only reason. Like, Jace is, like... Jace is so good that Jun Death Shadow is a good stuff deck that can turn for somebody. There's, like, really, the huge difference between Jund and Abzan, well, we're just dead here. Like, I can't deal with this. I have to draw Tarmogoyce for this thing. At least I have Delirium. So we'll just continue to play this. I can talk. Um, Jund and Abzan are, 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 at their heart, they are black good stuff decks. Oh, here, another elf. All right. Yeah, so, like, this guy here is cascading into Birds of Paradises. You know, is this what we want to be doing? Or, you know, I would, like... So it's the same... It's a similar thing. We're just going to go through this. It's so hard to, like, play and keep up with the conversation. Um, like, they got a wooded foothills coming off the top. I mean, if we draw Tarmogoyce in the rest of the game, like, we could win. But that's going to be difficult. No, there's Tom Wife. So now we can attack at least and start to clear out some of this. Yeah, I'm gonna just deal with one of these if they want to take a card. This takes away from the two for one. Like these Bloodbraid elves, like one of these Bloodbraid elves was amazing because they had the blood. They had the Blood Moon beforehand. Let's say they didn't have the Blood Moon beforehand. These Bloodbraid elves would be garbage. Play this pass, <clears throat> but at let me. Oh, that's yeah, that, that's the nail right there. Because now they're gonna draw a million cards and find more things. I guess we can draw our own blood ray elves. All right. I forgot I should be playing lands because of that. All right, we'll pass. Yeah, now we can traverse for our own elves. Holy shnikes! I forgot about that. Um, like whatever it is, you should check out the old SCG archives and um, 
what's his name from uh, Michael Majors played a played a uh, Michael Majors played a traverse deck. Now, can I cycle this block here? I probably need to. Yeah, can't cast that. Unless we cascade into our, our last abrupt guy. Um, he played Jace in a, in a bug death shadow deck against Tom Ross, who played blue white control. And he just like mopped the floor with him because you're just like that threat dense of a deck that also can like kill people on four if they stumble. And that's what I'm excited about here. Like the problem, what death shadow lacks is it lacks the ability to go late in the game to once it, it's it it loses its bad. If they attack with this Tyler Tracker, I'm gonna block and battle rage my goif. Come on, dude, get in here. Um, but like you're just a good stuff deck. Both decks are <clears throat> both decks are just people playing good spells. You know, they just this deck can turn four people. Jun can't turn four people, and that's okay. So that gets us an elf for next turn. Is it better to get elf or to get Tarmogoyf? God, it's way cooler to get elf, but it's probably better to get Tarmogoyf. Unfortunately, what can we cascade into? Let's look. I'm cascading to Liliana, which isn't very good. Battle Rage, he's at too high of a life total. Traverse is not bad. The discard spells are not very good at this point of the game. But then again, the discard spells wouldn't be good from... I guess they're not bad. Um, I think I'm just going to be... Could cascade into a goif. We could do we could do many things. Yeah, whatever. I'm here to say that this is more than likely wrong, but I'm doing it anyways. Cause I don't really care about this game anymore. Our opponent like I'm gonna I'm blood moon people. This card is infuriating. So now we just battle rage and we block here. They did draw three elves. That just shows you how powerful this card is. Like, this is not a Bloodbred Elf shell here. This is, like, not a very good elf deck. But because of how good the card is, my opponent's going to beat. Like, that means that, like, any... I think right now, almost any deck that can play Bloodbred Elf should be playing Bloodbred Elf. Like, and just trying it. And if it doesn't work, then get rid of it, you know? So we have some we have some hits. Let's see what we do here. Oh, there's a Tarmor Wave. Yeah. Again, we're just doing this because because we can. Oh baby! Let's go! Oh my god! Oh my god, look at all my tab fetch lands. Alright, um, Okay, we're not, we're not, uh, my, I'm not going to go to one here, but Moon and Tracker do seem pretty good at half elf, yeah, but, but now, like, we're going to win, unless my opponent re-moons me, which they did, sad, so sad, now we trade elves, I play my time of Now, I didn't want to go to one because there's just, like, so much that kills me, but maybe it was worth getting the shadow into play. Should have tapped that delta. What do you mean? Now you cascades. We're just having an elf off. Go elf yourself. I'm going to trade if you, my opponent attacks me. Well, they have a Tarmog Wife on top of their deck. I didn't have anything I could... F You're saying... Then you have Tomb Up for Shadow. Okay, he's got me. 
What do you mean? Could have fetched for... I didn't have any more basics. He blew up my swamp. Right? Yeah, this is Elf Panza, which is just like some high quality magic here. All right, so I kind of want to... I, like, I didn't bring my elves in in the beginning, in the first one, but now I'm like, oh, I can elf into... I can elf into whatever it is. Uh, I can, like, elf into ways to play around Blood Moon. So I'm kind of a little more into it. Oh, yeah, door. I, yeah, totally. You're talking when I initially cast... Blood Bright Elf. Yeah, I just didn't even think about that. I was so, I, I like again, like I said, I'm I'm kind of like really excited about just these unbands, what it's going to do the format, and I, I was a little all over the place with that. I'm going to bring these Radiant Flames in on the draw. I think when I cut the elves, but maybe not. Maybe I just want to go like this on the play. Maybe cut an Inquisition. Yeah, whatever. I mean, this might not be right, but, like, let's cascade. Let's, like, they didn't give us toys not to play them, you know? Let me grab some more coffee. All right, let's keep this because we can inquisition something. The thing is, how aggressive do we want to get with our life total? Let's cycle this before we fetch. See what we see what we get into. Okay, so we have two thought seizes. So I think I'm going to get aggressive here. Let's get down to where if we draw a death shadow, we can get into play and then try to prioritize finding some basics after that. God, I hope this whole thing just doesn't turn into, like, Elf Panza. All right, well, let's take a Trinisphere. Cascading in a Trinisphere is a thing, if that's, you know, what you want to do with your life. Okay, so Forest Bird. Okay, that's good. So now we get to go... We have delirium, so now if we draw like a draw anything, we draw a traverse. It's good. All right, there's our there's our little elf. So I'm not gonna crack this fetch land because this probably gets me basic forest, and I would like to what is foothills, and I probably have to shock anyways. And I'd like to just give a little bit more chance have the land be a land in my deck. Okay, so there's a traverse. I still don't think it's right to traverse for a land to just to play Blood Bright Elf. I'm going to hit that land eventually. So let's go get our basic. Let's traverse for a Tarmogoyf and play the Tarmogoyf. And every single land in our deck now produces red, so we don't have to worry about finding a red source. Because as soon as we get a land to play around, as soon as we have a land, we're going to be able to start cascading. <laughs> well, all right. Our opponent elves into a Tarmogoyf. Can't Maelstrom Pulse that, can we? All right, let's go like this, pass the turn. I think I know it's like some lands in their deck. And we have a lot of answers to this Goyf. Like I think we've got, we boarded in our three fatal pushes. Yeah, we didn't board in our dread board. Maybe we should have done that. Thrun the Lat, what a troll. All right, this game is going to get weird. It's going to turn it. This game is going to turn into like a really bogged down board state where I like one shot them with battle rage.
Okay, so let's go to five. Yeah, let's do it. Let's go get a stomping ground. I might as well get another black source. Get blood crypt. We're definitely at the point of the game right now where it's like cast death shadow. Yes. See, like my blood braid elves, like here's the difference. Jund has more impactful spells. I just put 11 power worth of mana on the battlefield for this blocks box. Yeah. For whatever. For four mana, I put 11 power in play. That is why I think this deck is going to be busted. The Blood Braid Elf! God, I'm so excited. I feel like a little kid. I feel like I just picked up my first set of magic, and like, now we're just playing. My opponent can't really kill me this turn, because like, even if they, they'd have to remove two creatures. Courser, okay. Domri Raid off the top. They fetch away Domri. They have a tracker, okay. But see, now we're just like... I would love to hit a fetch land. Okay, so what do I do? So, if I attack with both of these, that becomes 16 power. So my opponent has to put at least a lot of power into in front of these. Is there a way that I can incentivize my opponent so that I can kill them with Battle Rage? Domri, you know, old Domri raid. Let me think. So if I attack and my opponent puts any less than five power in front of one of these Death Shadows, we're going to kill him. So does that mean I should attack with these three? If I attack with, if I attack with everything, how does my opponent block? They block here block here block here I loved it I loved it in standard I played it in modern for a little while before collected company came out what do I do so if I attack with everything he and has to block everything and put five power in front of my so Tarmogoyf's bounce he probably double blocks one of these shadows Eats this blocks here. If he let, if he doesn't block the shadow, then any of my creatures are lethal with a battle raid or the elf. Is there a way that I can just like completely wreck his board? If I can attack with everything, then follow up with a maelstrom pulse. What does that do? Like if he double blocks my tarmogoyf here with these two blocks, puts four here here. This gets through. So maybe I just attack with all of with these three and leave the elf back. I don't think you want Blood Bright Elf and Radiant Flames in your deck at the same time. If this deck becomes popular, maybe. But like against aggro decks, I don't think you want Blood Bright Elf. I think I'm gonna just hold this elf back and attack with these. Because like if they if they double block this Tarmogoyf. They would have to put at least two creatures in front of here, eat them both, one creature in front of here, and then I just pulse their goyfs after combat, and I eat everything else. So yeah, I'm just going to attack and hold the elf back. So the males, between the Maelstrom Pulse, we should be able to clean up whatever my opponent does here, because they, they have to put at least five power in front of both of these. One, two. It's like, get out of my face. <clears throat> yeah, I would like to see another Domri Walker. It was like a, like Domri's like exactly how you want greed card advantage to be. Okay, so I want this. If they're going to have Tarmogoyce, I should bring in my Dread Boars. Then, unfortunately, I should probably cut my Elves. Get that block, though. Which means I can probably cut this Godless Shrine. And then bring these Radiant Flames in to clean up. The problem is, do I think I'm just going to lose, like, the Elf off? You know what I mean? 
do I want to keep my own elves in order to combat his elves? Like, get that elf out of here. I think we're going to go like this. I don't think I want these on the draw. I think I just want to be lean, interactive, and set up a board state where I can handle Bloodbraid Elf by getting just larger creatures on the battlefield. And that's another thing. Like, yes, like this card here is a Nambo with Bloodbraid Elf if you have nothing on the board, which doesn't usually happen. But this card just wins so many games. Like, you, they win so many games, you have no, no business in winning at all. Uh, so I can fetch around Blood Moon, my opponent's mulliganing, and I have a discard spell and a removal spell and something to clean up. The problem is, like, one of these is basically a removal spell, but it could help me play against an elf. I don't think I can ship this while it is not great. I don't think I can send this back. Like, if you don't have a Radiant Flames in this hand and it's a mulligan, there's a potential that this is fine. Like, this is an okay keep. I'm not proud of what's happening, but... Okay, so now we have Delirium, which is nice. So... Let's fetch our basic, and we'll hold this bobble. We're gonna be all Delirium, which is good. I'm gonna do this just in case he has two copies of Blood Moon. What do they do with there? They put a card on top, okay. Okay, so we take one Goyf, push another Goyf. Proper mechanics, do this on their upkeep. The tracker's annoying, but mobile hierarchy, okay? But we'll be able to deal with the tracker and the, um, we should be able to deal with the tracker and the hierarch on their own. Alternatively, I could just thought seize the tracker and deny them the card. But are they just going to play the tracker next turn? More than likely. I think I would like to just fetch my basic just in case they top deck a way to get, or that they top deck, um, a Blood Moon. I feel like I'm ahead in this game. Though I am going to want to get my threats online. Alright. So now we'll just one for one with this. We'll get this out of the way. And if my opponent elves us, then we have another... Um, we have another way to clean it up. Alright, we need to... Uh, we need to... We need to quit it with the land stuff. Now I wish I had my elves. Red, black, green. Just make sure they don't draw any cards. Corsair. Okay, so now they're drawing cards. Come on, move. What's going on here? Okay, so they have a Chandra on top. That's not good. That is not good. Uh, and this is kind of like what our hand did to us a little bit. Like, we didn't have a threat. And untapped to get a forest. Should have done that. Well, maybe. I mean, is it how, how essential is that? So he can't really... He can plus and then clear this on the top of his library. Hopefully hit a land. Okay, save a tracker. So then we're gonna wait to deal with this tracker off of the Radiant Flames. I'm gonna leave this fetch land just in case we hit a fatal push. And it lets me push this and then clean everything else up. But this Chandra is going, okay, so that's good. What do we get? Death Shadow is gonna get bigger. Tarmogoyf is bigger right now. Tarmogoyf is a 5-6. 
while Death Shadow is going to get larger. I could be mana efficient and I could protect my life total and go get Tarmogoyf. Flames away the board. Pressure this Chandra. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. Boy, wouldn't... What would a Blood Bright Elf do right now? I'm going to leave this land in my hand. If I need to do damage to myself, I can put it into play untapped. Okay, so you have a Finks coming. They're just going to make like infinite chum blockers for this, which is going to be rough. Oh, are they going to play it? Oh, they have a bolt on top. So they have a bolt on top. They play this. Play backer. Oh, now they can double block my Tarmogoyf. All right, we're in a tough spot. I don't think I'm going to crack this fetch land yet because we might need revolt. All right, that's good. So, attack Chandra. I can then Radiant Flames for like two and then play another Tarmogoyf. Like green, red, green. Okay, so let's attack Chandra. My opponent likely just blocks here. I think. Like they just block with this. Then we Radiant Flames the board away and then play another Tarmogoyf. We need a... Okay. If they put this in front, we'll kill this. Okay, so now we Radiant Flames for two. Play a second Goyf, which should let us get in at this Chandra. Their last card is a Swamp, I think. Oh, no. OBS is good. Okay, OBS star. All right, we're back. All right, OBS is... Okay, so... All right, good. We're reconnected. So now we Radiant Flames for two... And to do that, I have to fetch a Blood Crypt and go red, red, black. So let's go get our Blood Crypt. And go red, red. I wish it showed on here. Red, red, black. Okay. Okay, so now we should be able... Now, they might have to go minus this Chandra. Oh, they have Tyro Striker. So they have a land. So now they have to double... So they're going to have to double chump in order to keep their Chandra around. So they have a Bolt in their hand. I didn't see their other card. They moved too quickly. Oh, that's just the absolute nut. So now, I know they have a lightning bolt. I didn't see their other card. So I was worrying about what was going on. Tireless tracker. Oh, is the sound off? Why is it doing that? OBS says it's good. I don't know if it's something going on with what you're doing, Russell, or not. I don't think I'm attacking Chandra though, right? Sound is on, yeah. I don't think I'm attacking Chandra. I think... I, 
kind of want to... Though, if I attack this Chandra, he probably double jumps. Yeah, so let's try this. Let's give him the option to double jump. Yeah. Because he also has, like, lethal... If he has one more clue here... Oh, baby. We know he has a Hierarch on top of his deck. Dude, this Dreadbore has been gasoline! And we have two 7-8 Tarmogoyfs. You, you can't do it from, like, a revealed zone, I don't think. Tireless Tracker. Alright, I don't have this anymore. Alright, so yeah, we're just hard casting that boy. We're attacking for 14. My opponent should definitely chump with this hierarch. We know they have a bolt, so I'm at a virtual seven. Always new dreadboard. Yeah, dude, the dreadboard's been gas. All stream. Play ourselves a cute little street wraith. Cute little swamp walker. Little swamp walker that could. Alright. Get a clue, dude. So we don't know what that card. We know they have Bolt X. Tarmogoyf. Okay. So we have a lightning bolt. It's their last card. Alright, so now we got a hold here. Because we can't attack. We can attack with two creatures. What happens if we attack with two creatures? If we attack with two, hold back. My, he goes right here, right here. We trade for the tireless tracker. Or if he just goes block and bolt it, and that's not good. And then he chump blocks here. I block here. If I attack with both, I'm trading lightning bolt for Tarm Life and noble hierarch. Then I have to block this. Yeah, it's not worth it. Let's just sit tight here. We have, we have some more Fatal Pushes in our deck to find. We don't have long, though, because this Tile Extractor is like, definitely going to do, do some dirty now. Maybe I should have attacked because it's just going to end the game. Though, if we find a Battle Rage, we have three Battle Rages left in our deck, left in our 38 cards. So interesting. If we just find an abrupt decay or a push, we should be in good shape. So we just hit, we'll hit this Tarma Wife, and then we just abyss our opponent for the rest of the game. A, what do we got here? Kitchen Fangs? Okay. Alright. We're out of Radiant Flames. Battle Rage. Alright, we're just gonna pass. Last card's Lightning Bolt. We need Battle Rage. We need a Battle Rage. This is getting dicey. Alright, there's an Elf into a Molten Rain, okay. And now the game's like stalled out where I want my Bloodbred Elves, you know? So now we go block, 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 take six, bolt us to one if my opponent attacks. This is where I wish I had my one Haymaker. Like, I boarded out my elves on the draw for the Radiant Flames. So, Radiant Flames were good. Like, it was definitely worth it. 
You know, maybe it's better to have anger of the gods. You definitely want the X3 because the human deck gets gets over the X3 really well. Our opponent's incentivized to kind of hurry up because of how bad Battle Rage would be. God, we just drew drew all the get all the bad stuff at the wrong time. Put this in the play tap to pass the turn. Good. Yeah, it would have killed the first goal. Yeah, because I radiant flames for two. I radiant flames for two. Now that I remember it. Yep, you're right. <laughs> Nessa, that's bad. I mean, this if if this is something that comes in modern here, it is dumb that it's like a you know like cascading into blood into blood moon is like whatever you know. Do, do what you gotta do. He should tick this up, I think. Though, block, 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 take. Oh yeah, this is bad. But I guess I get to go block, eat, eat. Block, block, eat, eat. So I know he's got lightning bolt. Yeah, you can't, you can't attack. Oh yeah, 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 I would have, I would have angered it because I, I had to have him block with the thing. So I was sitting there, I was like, what if he double blocks here? You know. So if he attacks with everything, I eat this Tireless Tracker, eat this Bloodbraid Elf, chump this Tarmogoyf, take five. <clears throat> then he dies. So he obviously has to have something. He's got he has one lightning bolt left. Oh, how's it going, Archmage? It's been a hot minute. My life has been all over the place, though, at, at this time. I haven't been streaming as much. Like, I've just been super busy. So he's got to have another lightning bolt. Because we're going to go here. 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 Or he's just looking to trade with this. Like, bolt my Tarmogoyf. No, he had double bolt. Why did it take him so long? Yeah, it couldn't be double bolt. Like, what What was up with that? Alright, let's get him for the last match, and then we're going to switch decks. We're going to play a... We're going we're gonna to get spicy. Okay, there we go. All right, let's jump back over here. The elves have been good. Yeah, the elves. The elves have been great. We we had one somewhat sad elf when we hit a traverse, but we had delirium, so our elf was a three-two haste that drew us an eight-eight, which was like perfectly fine. Um, I lost to that Ponza deck you just saw. I lost to Tron. I beat a Ponza deck and I beat Bogle. So we have not had like the greatest Magic playing experience of all time, to tell to say the least. You excited to play some? You excited to buy some hundred and fifty dollar Jace's Archmage? Come on! 
No, I don't have cake commands. I, I just was trying to find space for it, but I, I, I was struggling. And I think that grinding with lingering souls is is a better way to do it. We're gonna ship this hand. If this was a green source, we would keep it. Though we had two draws. There's 18 lands. Two draws at. Yeah, if only this was a green source. I'm gonna I'm gonna be an adult. Yeah, this hand's not much better, but we are gonna keep it. Put this on the bottom. I have a blue version of the Death Shadow deck, like a four-color blue that plays a K command. Hey, Ashoth, how's it going? God, the Tron people, they're out. They're ruining our fun. This is going to go get its Overgrown Tomb. And we will now Inquisition. I wish this was the Thought Seize but such is life. Well, so Argo, I don't know about that yet because I think that this is a better, like the Death Shadow, um, oh wow, he's kind of far off here. The Death Shadow shell is better than the Jun shell. No, Jace is next. The Death Shadow shell is much better than the Jun shell. Oh God, did you just rip it? That's the second time that's happened today while I've been streaming, where they have just savagely ripped the Tron piece. On to. So what do we want to deal with? I guess we deal with... Like, neither of them are remotely beatable. We played against a Bloodbraid Elf Ponza deck that we lost to. Just barely. Played against Tron, and I think we're about to lose to Tron again. So, like, such is life right now, I guess. God, if he'd have just missed there, we'd have been all good. So which one do we want to try to beat? We want to try to beat the Karn or the Worm Coil. I guess here's what we do. We play Tarmogoyf. We hope our opponent plays Karn. Minus is on our Tarmogoyf, and then we thought sees the Worm Coil, and then we just kind of, like, cross our fingers. You would thought sees the Worm. You think he's going to eat a land? I think he's going to go up with it. Seems to... I think both lines are like us just crossing our fingers that our opponent plays into what we want to do. Though I guess that if I thought sees the Worm Coil, they definitely... Because if I play the Tarmogoyf and he just plays Worm Coil Engine, then like, I can't win. But if I thought sees the Karn, I should have got a stomping ground then. Yeah, we'll, we'll give... I mean, we'll give it a whirl. We'll dismiss here. Get this. I should have got a stomping ground. If, if I would have thought about this here then the stomping ground would have been better. Or just not fetching at all. But yeah, I was I was I was in on my like Tarmogoyf plan. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I was in on the I think it's I think either of them are very unbeatable if my opponent like plays plays right. But my opponent's gonna give me a chance. Granted, like we can't actually win. You know, because they have Tron. Oh, God, we're in it. We're in it. We got ourselves a little beater. We got ourselves. We draw a fetch land. We get to attack for four, play a six, seven. Then we draw a fetch land. Next time, we'll actually kill him. Or is that just terrible? I, I think that it, it's it's a line that we... Oh, man. It's a line that we could take. Uh, what could we add, I guess? Take a look. Probably go to the next game. But this is like... I built... And I probably misbuilt my deck just because, like... I was sitting here excited for Bloodbraid Elf and Jace when I didn't play against Bloodbraid Elf or Jace once. Yeah, we're good here. 
like I was sitting here all pumped to play the sweet mid-range fights here, but you know, or be able to like go underneath with having a little bit of staying power. So I like this, like this here, and this. We're on the play. I don't want my fatal pushes. Abrupt Decay is okay on the play, but I'm going to look to side it out on the draw because it's only really good on the play when you can snipe a map. Besides that, sometimes it hits a naked uh, whatever it is, and it's okay. Um, the elves probably are not where we want to be, even though we did bring the elves in when we were playing last last time we played against this deck just because we, we wanted to Blood Bright Elf people. But I could see just playing it on the play to stay aggressive. You know, like maybe this is what we maybe this is just what we want because it's the best way to rebuild after like an O stone. I could see that being an option. If I wanted to board like that, let's just you know let's get into theory land. Then I definitely want this and this. The pulse is like a little kind of sad because it deals with the. It deals with the L with the problem after it's already come down, and maybe we're just trying to like discard, 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 get under them. Like I'll definitely, and then the same thing with this dread boar. Maybe we'll trim on a traverse because they'll more than likely have graveyard hate. So I could just bring in this and this. You know, and maybe this isn't right. I don't know, but it's like it's sweet, and I like I just have no idea, and I kind of want to just try it out. Like, no matter what, I believe that we're a pretty serious dog in this matchup. Let's try to like let's just try to get him here. If we're trying to get under them. I think we can, and that could be right. I'm just saying, like elf into, you know, obviously we have the elf into something gets us it either recovers us it is ideologically backwards but like I think I'm just like screw it I want to play a blood bright elf you know right wrong or indifferent we're going to jam some blood bright elves <laughs> and obviously I'm going to have to play some games off stream here rejection is so good yeah rejection you know and we, we have a blue version coming up next so We'll be able to give that a whirl. <laughs> I appreciate everyone that's showed up and hang out today, even through our very, the minorest of technical difficulties that we were having. Uh, it sounds okay. It's good, not great. But if we leave them with a map on one, then we'll be able to like get a hold of it. We can tango with a Wormclaw Engine, and our opponent Mulligans, which I'm all about, you damn Tron player. It's like I Mulligan into the perfect. All right, let's go get Overgrown Tomb. Let's take a look. They kept the card on top. Okay, so we can actually take a map. So they kept a land on top for sure. So I actually, we actually can take this relic, grudge the map, and then we kind of time walk them on the other map. Because like, I something that I think that people don't do enough in matchups like these, they don't, when they play these Traverse Death Shadow decks, they don't work hard enough to keep their graveyard intact. So the Traverse is turned on in Tarmogoy for large. So I think I'm going to take this relic, which is not even like, it's not even necessarily suspicious that I'm taking this relic and that I have the grudge for these two maps. And if my opponent doesn't, then my opponent needs to draw another land to be able to go expedition map and crack it, or, you know, they time lock themselves. So I think I'm going to just take this relic. Okay, so there's the power plant, and there's the map. Snipe that. Let's 
See, now they can't even play the next one until they find a land. And we can just not seize it. If we would like. <laughs> yeah. All right, that's a discard that gives us delirium. And now we're just going to, like, punish them for not doing anything. That doesn't give us delirium. So do we want to ditch it? We probably still do. I mi I miss I miscounted my types. I forgot that was an artifact. But okay, we'll just get rid of this because it's the weakest card out of all these. They probably did a world breaker. Oh, they did some drag dad. There it is. Relic. Why not? Seems odd to me. I could just smoke this relic, but I don't I think it's better to just get rid of this expedition map and then hope to draw a piece. So I could just go Thought Seize, ditch my traverse, blow this up, play my land so that even a blood red elf off the top is live. I think that's the plan here. Because we have 11 threats in our deck. And he's going to have to crack this relic soon, I think. Because we're going to run him off of the out of the game with this Liliana. Let's just take a look first before we do anything. Yeah, we're just going to like run him out of resources here. Oblivion Stone. We'll take this O Stone. I guess we get both of the cards, so it doesn't really matter. Get this. And then I'll just ditch this traverse. Keep this land in my hand for science reasons, I guess. No real point to it. <clears throat> Can tripping. God, I hope that he just can't cast that and I get to just eat it with a Liliana. Oh, sad. All right, let's get rid of my thought seeds, leave my land in there. This is definitely a Liliana to six game, or to seven game. We're going to try to keep this Liliana in play for as long as we can. All right, so now we just play everything out. Uh, he's got, he's probably, I wonder if he's black green Tron. Traverse for a basic and discard that. Yes, that would have made sense. They, that would have made sense to traverse for a basic. Yeah. Yeah. Just went over my head when we were chatting here. I've made all kinds of mistakes today. I'm just so excited. Like, this is... Like, I, I, I came in to, like, competitive magic while playing this Bloodbraid L. While, while playing this deck. And... Chromatic Sphere. Okay. Like, I came into Magic playing Blood Red Elf, and Blood Red Elf's back. Like, it's, it's amazing. Totally can't just invalidate me, or if he, like, rips the piece, and then just gets as hot. Okay, so we ripped the land. Shouldn't crack this. All right, we're looking for... Bobble. Meyer. All right, I'm going to cast this, go up one more time, and then I'm going to scry on my opponent's turn. Wait to see what they do. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. I'm just sad that we didn't get to cascade into Lingering Souls this week, or this league. They are exiling. This probably means they hit a payoff. If I had to assume, they hit something good. BBE's been sweet, man. Like, I've been... Uh, this is like a... Well, what, what are we afraid of here? They get an Urza's Mine. O-Stone would make me want to puke. Yeah, Jason BBE are live, my friend. 
Bigelup, Tarmogoyf. I think that's worth keeping, because it's going to be big. Like, I'd rather draw Tarmogoyf than a random card. Even though he's just a little guy. A little Tarmogoyf. Okay, so now let's... Okay, so Urza's mine. Urza's tower versus... Do I know any of his other cards here? Exiled. He's got an Urza's mine. No, this is revealed. Let me see if he's got... He doesn't have any other Tron pieces exiled. So let's go like this. I mean, this is all we can do. We cut him off green spells. He could, he's probably just going to keep these. I've not run into a Jace yet. It's been like... So, Rafi, we played against two Bloodbraid Elf Ponza decks. Went one and one. We beat Boggles, and we beat... Um, play this guy out. Played Boggles, and... I can't remember the, the other round that we played against. But it has not been very good magic. I'm going to leave this... I'm actually just going to bolt my opponent. I'm going to leave this fetch land in play just because it doesn't grow Tarmogoyf and if I draw another Bobble, which would be like my fourth, but it's another... Uh, yeah, that sucks. It's another Scry. I haven't played against any good magic. I played against two Bloodbraid Elf Ponza decks, one, um, one Bogles deck, and two Tron decks. Drag that, okay? So like it's been it's been kind of it's been kind of miserable magic, if we're gonna be honest. So I don't really know what's going on. Yeah, it's 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 like why why you have such a fun card. Why do you want to just like play that card in such a way that stops people from playing magic, you know? I'm gonna leave one of these fetch lands uncracked. Alright, well we might as well just upgrade our Liliana. Loyalty, and it actually grows Tarmogoyf. So now Goyf's a two-turn clock. Yeah, Pons of BBE is gross. All right, there we go. Okay, so now do we sideboard in a way that's like act like an actual adult by cutting our Bloodbright Elves, or are we just like screw this, we're playing Bloodbright Elf? Maybe we cut a land on the draw to try to get a little more of this interaction in here. My opponent can like go screw themselves. Um, I think I'm gonna like, actually I might cut another Traverse and then put this Dreadbore back in. No, probably this Maelstrom Pulse because like they, they're going to be so deep in Relics after game two. After They're going to be, going to be so deep in Relics that these Traverses aren't going to be that great. So let's try this. The, I do not think the Bloodbraid Elves should be in here. I want to like let the world know that, but I don't care. I want to play with my new toy. But Rafi, this is our value right here. This is what we're doing. We're doing the old Blood Braid Elf plus Lingering Souls plan. I should be an adult and find a place for this Dreadbore though. Let me let me cut this Decay. Oh shoot. Because Decay is not as great on the play because you can't like screw them with maps like we did. No, did I get it? Did I get it? Come on, come on. Come on! It's still counting down time, so I think I got it. Did try flare? Maybe. This hand is gas. This hand is like does not affect the graveyard. We have a redraw, two lands, two discard spells, and a death shadow. Like we're playing a three-three on two. Probably. Well, let's see if it did. No, it didn't. 
I should have I should have cut an abrupt decay though. Hundred percent. All right, let's look at our top card. This is explosive. Battle rage is where we want to be. So let's go get. I'm gonna get blood crypt in case they. So that I've so that and I might get. No, I'm gonna get blood crypt overgrown tomb. Regardless, I'm not getting like this hand is. I can't afford to not get a black source with this hand. All right. So what do we do? I think we can handle this dot nuts here. Maybe I just take Karn and take Worm Coil Engine, and then just be like, just battle the thought knots here. Yeah, I don't think we can afford to like deal with this card. So let's just take the Worm Coil Engine. Let's take the Karn, because like, what are they? Oh, I didn't even check. Oh, it was two power plants. That was so stupid of me. That was so stupid. I thought this was different here at first glance, because like I always assume they have it, but whatever. There's the power plant. Sylvan Scrying. That makes me feel like marginally better. All right, now we're in good shape. So this Liliana is going to come down before this Dot Nuts here. So let's go look here. Dude, we're going to win this game. Yeah, this Thought Not Seer's little game. Small. It's child's play. Let's go get Blood Crypt. Let's play ourselves a 5-5. Five five. We have if we draw a traverse or a street wraith, we're gonna win next turn. Which would be sweet. Fifty-three. I'm probably only going to be able to get like a couple games in with my other, with my other, uh, my other deck because I've got to get to work. All right. Um, do you think he's got Reality Smasher? There's like the hundred dollar question. So if I play this, Fetch Shock Eight, play Liliana Tick Up, find any way to deal damage to myself. This is only eleven, so I should Fetch Shock. Pick up, get rid of the swamp, keep the battle rage. He takes battle rage. I edict. If I find an elf or of a couple draws, like then we just kill them. Never seen Big Tron. Yeah, we went on a thought seize. Yep. Yeah. yeah, so let's just go. I think I'm just going to go Liliana, tick up, ditch, ditch my swamp because. Either way, each one of these cards could... Like, he's going to take this Battle Rage. And then I get another look at a land for... Um, Dot Knot for Bloodbraid Elf. And if it's a Shock Land, then I get to kill my opponent. Because of the Elf and this is enough damage. So basically... What's going to happen? Unless he's got, like, the nuts. If he's got the nuts, then he's got the nuts. But, like, if my opponent thought not sears me next turn, I have two looks at a land to kill my opponent. Because a land means Bloodbraid Elf. And he's got to take Battle Rage. If my opponent doesn't thought not sear me, there's the forest. So we just have to hope my opponent doesn't go, like, land Ulamog. Okay, that's good. So he takes Battle Rage. Has to take Battle Rage. Oh, I could have not activated. Yes, then he's in the same turn. Yeah, you're right, Romo. I'm just like so focused. I'm not thinking here. I'm looking at my time. I'm going to get to work. Yeah, I should have just not activated. You're right. You're right, sir. Yeah, that hundred percent. That probably would have done it. Yeah, 
Now, I probably don't even play this Tarmogoyf. Uh, what could he do? His last two cards could be land. I guess we want to beat. Let's make it so that he's got to have an Ulamog or a... He needs Ulamog or whatever it is to beat me. Because this still beats... I guess it doesn't necessarily beat Thrag Tusk. It beats Thrag Tusk depending on what we cascade into. Okay. Yeah, we got it. All right. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit more about the deck, but I actually just want to get a couple matches in. 